girl, what a world, what a light. Oh, I married Joey. What a mind, love is blind, what a white. Joan Davis. With Jim Backus in Why Mary Joe. Tell you, Brad, not only as a district attorney, but as a man, it just makes me furious. Yeah. Thanks. Here's this phony talent scout racket right under our noses, and we can't do a thing about it. But it's so obviously phony, you wouldn't think anybody would fall for it. Sugar? No, thanks. Well, these two promoters prey on bored housewives, and apparently it's a cinch to convince them they can become great actresses. Then they string them along until they get some money out of them, and then they disappear. Still say a woman would have to be pretty foolish to fall for a racket like that. Where do they find these bird brains? Anywhere. They walk right up to them in department stores, supermarkets, drug stores. And the sad part of it is that after a woman is hooked, she refuses to testify. Yeah. You know who I feel sorry for? The husbands. Yeah. Imagine being married to a woman foolish enough and, and gullible enough to fall for a thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that pose? Da -da -da -don't, don't move. Have you ever seen anything like this, Joe? There is only one way to describe this. Sheer poetry. What do you think, Joe? We've come to the end of our search, Harry. We've found exactly what we've been looking for. What's the matter, fellas? Did you lose something? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Is this a doll? What? A living one? I'm telling you. At the counter? Never dreamed. Is this an angel? A doll, a little doll. I tell you, Harry, you just can't get over it. Imagine our being lucky enough to walk into a drugstore and find a dream like this. Listen to me when I tell you, Harry, a star is born. Madam, perhaps I better explain. Me and my partner are talent agents from Hollywood. It's our responsibility to find new personalities and make top flight actresses out of them overnight. You are exactly what motion pictures need today. But exactly. Motion pictures need me? Gosh, television must have hurt the movies more than I thought. Lady, I have been a talent scout for 30 years, and when there's any talent around, I can see it. He can see it. It only took one look for me to see that you had that certain... That certain something. Only one look. It's hard to describe, but when you've got it, you've got it, and you've got it. Oh, she's got it. Oh, sure I've got it. <laughs> I got a whole drawer full, and uh, I... I don't think I know what you're talking about, though. It's a certain magic that happens only once in a generation. Peter Barra had it. Clara Bow had it. Marilyn Monroe has it. And you have it. Let me be the first to congratulate you. And let me be the second. Sheba, come back, little Sheba. Where are you, little Sheba? I just love peppy music. <laughs> An Oscar for me? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Members of the Academy, I, I simply don't know how to thank you. But of course I couldn't have done it alone. I must thank the members of my crew and also the members of uh, the entire staff. And my, no autographs, please. And, and I would like to... Brad. Oh, Brad. I was wondering what your plan was doing in my plan. Well, Joni, what's going on? What was that act you were just doing? Brad, look at me. Sure. Well, what do you see? I see you, and I like it. Is that all? Are you blind? Can't you tell that I have it? What it? 
<laughs> it's it. I'm going to be a big movie star like uh, Marilyn Monroe and uh, Esther Williams. <laughs> Uh, Joan, why don't you tell me the whole story? Well, there really isn't very much to tell, Brad. You see, I was sitting in this drugstore, and two men came over to me, and they just loved my face. They couldn't get over... This is... Joan, what? Two this men in, in, in a drug... Wait a minute, Joan. Huh? You mean that two men approached you in a drugstore and told you that you had great talent and they could make a great movie actress out of you? Yeah. But how did you know, dear? Oh, uh, something like that, sir. Gets around. How do you like that? I'm starting to get famous already. I can't believe it. Well, Joan, I'd better wash up for dinner. Yes, dear. But they just love my face. This face, Brad. They, they really... Oh, you darling. Uh, Jim, look, in that movie talent racket you were telling me about, uh, I found a woman who will be willing to testify. You did? Hey, that's great. Just what we need. Who is this sucker? My wife. Holy smokes, Brad. I, I'm sorry. There's nothing personal in what I said, you know. I know. But uh, what'll we do now? Well, don't say a word to Joan. Just let her go ahead with everything. They'll audition her and tell her she needs a week's instruction and promise to give her a screen test at a major studio. Then I'll give you some Mark Bills for her to give them. That way we can catch these two fellas red-handed. You know something, Harry? I'm worried. I don't think that Mrs. Stevens fell for it. I think she's a little too smart. Smart? The only thing worries me is whether she got brains enough to find the place. Come in. Sorry I'm late, fellas. I had a hard time finding the place. Mrs. Stevens, <laughs> even more beautiful than I remembered you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Trent. Well, really. Now, shall we begin with your audition? Audition? Of course, we must make absolutely sure that you have talent. We can't afford to take a chance because millions of dollars are involved here. Let's begin with the voice test. Joe, the talent chart? The talent chart at once. Now, Mrs. Stevens, repeat after me. How now, brown cow? <laughs> How now, brown Joe, did you hear that? Did I hear it? Oh, the music of those tones, what timbre, oh. what pitch! You passed your voice test with flying colors. Voice test 100%. Congratulations. Oh, yes. And now, Harry, it's time for the emotion test. Are you ready, Mrs. Stevens? Oh, I suppose so. We All start right. with anger. You are in a situation where you are angry, but positively furious. Now, will you give us some anger? <laughs> You all right, Joe? Hmm? Yes, yes, I'm all right now. It's magnificent, magnificent, but... Oh, the ticker, you know. Oh, oh the goosebumps. I would say anger, 100%. Now, Mrs. Stevens, you have heard something that's made you very happy. Very happy. You are absolutely ecstatic. Now, may we have happiness? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just great. Oh. Just great, Mrs. Stevens. Just great. Oh, I'll tell you. Now, now, Mrs. Stevens. Sadness. Sadness. Shall we continue now with sadness? Complete change. Yeah. Now, in this situation, you've had some bad news. You're very sad. Now, may we see sorrow? Saddest yet. <laughs> Sadness, one hundred percent. I guess I overdid it a little. No, no, great. just great. Stevens, I can't stand it. You can do anything, but oh. anything. <laughs> now, Mrs. Stevens, may we see surprise, <laughs> hate, fear, boredom, <laughs> jealousy, envy, love, <laughs> disgust, hate, hope, charity. Oh, Mrs. Stevens, that's the most sensational display of acting I've ever seen. You passed your audition with flying colors. 900 percent. 
Not nine. She didn't get nine hundred. Nine. There Miss it is. Own, uh, Mrs. Steve. Congratulations. Mrs. Steve. Just wonderful. Just wonderful. A day to be remembered. Oh, it's going to make oh, all the money yes, Stephen just so talented. Happy. So happy. Your husband will be <laughs> terribly pleased. <laughs> Sit right <laughs> down. <laughs> yes, can you imagine? Can you? I never saw it. Never saw it now, before. Mrs. Stevens, we're going to tell you what we're going to do for you. We are going to give you one week of expert instruction. At the end of that time, you're going to get a screen test with a major studio. Oh, Mr. Tremlick, a screen test? Of course, there'll be a few minor expenses involved in this test. A few tips here and there, but you won't mind that. Well, of course not, after all. And what's a few minor tips? Uh, absolutely, because what is $500, considering what you're going to get for it? Well, of course not, after all. What's five... Uh, say $500? Yes, and remember, you're going to sign a million-dollar contract. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, take it out of my million dollars. Uh, no, uh, no, Mrs. Stevens. I don't think we'd like to have a thing like that happen. Everything you make... You keep. Well, where am I going to get $500? How about your husband? My husband? <laughs> well, what wife can get $500 from her husband just like that? Don't you have uh, girlfriends? You could borrow it from them. Borrow? Well, yes, that's an idea. I could borrow it from the girls and... and... Oh, but I think I'm going to have an awfully tough time trying to talk him into it. What, a great actress like you? Harry. Why, it would be a cinch for you. I tell you what, why don't you try it on us right now, huh? Go ahead. Girl, I, your devoted, loyal friend, am in dire need of $500. Could you, would you... Find it in your hearts to lend me the money. <laughs> How can we refuse her, Agnes? I know I couldn't, Myrtle. We'd give you the money ourselves if we had our handbags here. In a minute. Really? Oh, I can't wait to ask the girls. I didn't know it was going to be this easy. And girls, you, you must keep in mind the uh, good neighbor policy because, uh, after all, you know, a, a friend indeed is a friend in need. And could you, would you, could you find it in your hearts to lend me the money? No. Doctor, dearie, just left. I have to have an operation. What? Yes, I have to have my left tonsil removed. Five hundred dollars. Cash your check. Either one will do. Five hundred dollars. Um, Joan, uh, five hundred dollars for a tonsillectomy uh, couldn't possibly be more than a hundred and fifty. No. Oh. Are you positive? Positive. Uh, but what if I have complications, dear? Uh, what kind of complications? Well, five hundred dollars worth. A uh, cash or check, either one will do, honey. <laughs> well, that's a lot of complications for just one little tonsil. Yes, dear, but 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 you see, this tonsil is so infected that it's it's running into my throat, <laughs> and it's running into my arm, and and running into my hand. See that? And, and it's running into my leg, and, and my knee, and, and my ankle bone, and and it's running, dear. Running? Yeah, it's running into about five hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, cash your check. Either one will do, see. Uh, Joni, why don't you admit what you really want the money for? Because you wouldn't give it to me if I admitted it. Oh, darn you, Brad. You're so smart. Joni, how do you know I wouldn't give you the money if you uh, really told me what you wanted it for? I can just hear what you'd say if I came up to you and I said, Brad, give me $500 for my acting career. I'd simply say, here it is. Thanks. <laughs> Brad, I don't know how to thank you. Poor Joan. She'll be glad to testify when she knows what it's all about, but, well, here she is on her way to the studio for her screen test, and she'll never get past the gateman. Well, I'm sorry, Brad, but in order to prove that it is a phony screen test, we have to let her go through with it. Jungle goddess. Huh? 
That's the script she's been studying for a screen test. She thinks she's playing Ula, the jungle goddess. I will not work with that chimp, I tell you. But Dolores, he's harmless. Oh, yeah? Well, he doesn't act like a chimp. He acts more like a wolf. <laughs> See what I mean? All right, all right. Bonzo, you can rest now. Okay, come on. We'll shoot it long shots using a double. I figured something like this would happen. Huh. <laughs> Mervyn, would you please keep your mind on this production? Here we are all set to shoot and there's no double. Call the gate again. Front gate. No, there hasn't been any girl here for the jungle picture yet. Uh, excuse me, I I'm Joanne Latour. That's my professional name, you know. A and I'm here about that screen test. What screen test, lady? You know, for the jungle theme. Okay, she's here. I'll send her right over. Uh, go over to stage five and ask for Mr. Montaigne, the director. <laughs> Mr. Spencer was called to be on stage ready and make up at one o'clock, sir. Uh, honey. Honey, can I help you? Oh, I'm looking for Mr. Montaigne. Right here. Mr. Montaigne, uh, Mr. Treadwick told me to get right Never on. mind explanations. Get into that dressing room over there and get your costume on. This delay has cost us $1,000 already. Oh. Well, just take it out of my first week's salary. <laughs> Are you sure this is the right outfit? Imagine. They shot a leopard just for this. <laughs> okay, let's get on with the scene. Let's see, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... uh Joanne Latour. Uh, I'd like you to meet our star. Would you mind stepping over here for a moment, please? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, right this way. Uh, Bonzo, Bonzo, this is Miss Latour. Miss Latour, this is Bonzo, our star. Now, uh, remember, you have never seen a man before because you were lost in the jungle as a child and raised by the animals. But a plane crashes in the jungle, and the injured pilot lies right beside her over there. Now, you and Bonzo are taking your morning call at the when you see him. The first man you have ever seen. Got it? Well, I hope so. I, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> oh. uh, well, let's rehearse it once, shall we? Uh, Bonzo, you and Miss Latour will enter from over there. <laughs> Places, everyone. Come on, Bonzo. Mr. Spencer, we're ready for you now, please. Come right down here, please. Feet up. Quiet on the set, please. Settle down, everybody. Okay. Let's go. Action, action. Come on. Frolic in. Frolic in. Frolic along the way. Bonzo, show. I'm sorry, Juan, so I didn't mean it. I, I tripped. You're in the jungle. You're not in your way to grammar school. You're happy. You're carefree. <laughs> oh, did you have to show it, Bonzo? Fine. You do it. <laughs> exactly. Thanks very much, old man. Okay, Mr. Cornell, you try it. All right, I'll... Come on, frolic in. Walk the way Bonzo showed you. Come on, frolic along. Action. No, no, no. What's the matter with you anyway? I meant in the mood like Bonzo. Oh, in the mood. Yeah. Bonzo's calling his agent. He wants to quit. Quit? But why? He says she's stealing his act. Oh, oh my God. Uh, Bonzo, I'm awfully sorry. Please, I am. Uh, uh, don't call your agent. Bonzo, would you give Miss Latour just one more chance, sir? Please, Bonzo. Bonzo, thank you very much. For a minute, I thought I was fired. Thank you very much. Okay. You're awfully sweet. 
Okay. Okay, now we'll try the part where you see the injured, unconscious pilot. Remember, it's the first time you've ever seen a man. Yes. Got it? Yeah. Let's go. I won't do it anymore, honestly. <laughs> Make up all right? All right, settle down, everybody, will you? Quiet on the set. Action. <laughs> No, 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 no. You're a beautiful young woman. He's a beautiful young man. The first you've ever seen. You're wonderstruck. In love at first sight. Don't you understand? <laughs> All right, Bonzo, you want to show her? Good. That's it. That's exactly it. Now, look, can you please try and do what Bonzo did? That's fine. Come on, Bonzo. Come on. Uh. What an actor. <laughs> okay. Action. <laughs> now we'll try the part where you and Bonzo are both very sad because the pilot appears to be dead. But then he moves. He's alive. You and Bonzo were so happy that you both begin to dance with joy. Now, do you think you can do a simple little thing like that? Well, I, I hope so. I'll try. <laughs> They'll go on making fools out of other women. Well, you're just wasting your breath. I won't do it. Besides, look what happened to my acting career. You're, you're acting. Acting, dear. That's it. Honey, honey, that's just the point. I, I, instead of making you appear as a sucker, dear, we'll, we'll present you as an undercover agent from the district attorney's office. A female private eye whose beauty and brains captured those two crooks. Yeah? Yeah. This is a real part for you to play. Joni, can't you just see it? There you are in the center of a tense courtroom. All the eyes are on you. The jury, the audience, the reporters, all waiting for you to get up and present your evidence. This is real drama. Will Joan Stevens, alias Operator X7, please make a report. <laughs> Well, here's how it was. As per the DA's instructions, I was staked out at this pill rolling emporium at Fifth and Main. I ain't real cagey. It's two sharpies move in. Size me up, size them up. I know they got me outnumbered, but I don't move. One false move, and I'm in a block of cement at the bottom of the ocean. I know I gotta use brains and beauty to capture these crooks. So I let them take me in. I went for the five hundred. I lost my acting career. Now I'll never be.
Today's cast were Barney Phillips, Bob Sweeney, Jerry Hausner, Sandra Gould, Geraldine Carr, Myra Marsh, Joanne Jordan, George N. Niza, Gil Fry, and Bonzo the Chimp.